the smaller car market has increased enormously in recent years. There are more two or even three car families these days, more city living where small cars are nippier and easier to park, and the attraction of lower insurance and fuel bills, as well as environmental considerations make the small car a sensible buy. Car File this week focuses on this market segment and on the revised Renault Clio. We are talking about a very, very competitive end of the market here. The small car is very much hot property at the moment. And let's face it, when you look around, there's really not very much wrong with any of them. The manufacturers have pretty much got it sussed as far as the small car buyer is concerned. They've all got light, airy cabins. They've all got enough room in the boot for the shopping and enough room in the back to wedge in the kids or a couple of mates. Small economical engines all round. But you've got to choose according to something. Well, let's face it, no matter how hard-hearted, how ruthlessly efficient and logical we might claim to be when we're sat in the pub, at the end of the day, none of us wants to look a pillock. And when you're buying one of these small cars, the only thing you can choose by is how it looks. So how to choose? Well, for me, it comes down to the following. At one end, there's Fiat's diminutive Cinquecento, but Lycra's never really been me. There's Nissan's Micra, but then... On the outside it might look all new, but underneath there's no hiding it. We know it's still very much a case of tweed shirt, cloth cap and driving gloves. Ford's Fiesta, very popular indeed. Quite well made, very, very practical. Nice big pockets, waterproof even. I don't want to be seen in that. Also from Ford is the car. And then there's Volkswagen's Polo. Very smart, very practical, very well made. But somehow certainly not me. There's Rover's 100, which, um, yeah. Renault Clio. This is probably Nicole's own. Definitely not me. Definitely not a chap's car, is it? Or is it? Because the new Clio, we're told, has been made very much more masculine. And if you ask me, I think they're right. This is Milton Keynes, and it is not the style capital of Europe. But that's precisely why we're here today. Because it's not the opinions of the boffins and the designers and the experts that we're interested in. Their opinion stops mattering the moment they sign the design off. And face it, not all of us spend much of our time swanning around Mayfair or the south of France. No, it's the people of Milton Keynes. It's their opinion that matters. It's the people of Milton Keynes who decide what's stylish and what's not stylish when they buy their cars. And that is why we have brought this, the new Clio, here today. Good shape too, but suspect the way it dips down at the back. Yeah, it definitely does but, come uh, down, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does come down off the roof, but uh, yeah, aerodynamically it looks good. How much? If I could afford it, I'd have it. <laughs> it just looks good, it looks different. Um, and the colour's really nice as well, it's an original colour. Well, it looks slightly long on the wheelbase and it's got a very nice bum. <laughs> well, no, some people have said it's got a big bum. But if you yeah. like big bums, that's, you know... Well, I like it because it's going to be, it's going to have a lot of room, easy um, to actually get stuff in. For chic? Chic. Mm, Has it got yeah. any Frenchness to it, do you think? Well, <laughs> I don't know, it probably does look a bit continental, doesn't it? Is that a good thing? Well, I should think so, yes. It... The way the top dips down a bit, it is nice. I do it like kinda, it. It sticks out a bit. Do you like that? It's a double bump, they've called it. It's got a big bump. <laughs> well, that'll suit me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd have it. It's not too bad. I think eventually all cars are going to look like that. But all I'm the new cars these days shape. seem to look very similar, don't like they? Buggy type and things. I don't really like the idea that it's geared specifically for women. You know, well, Renault were actually saying this is a more masculine version of the really? previous Clio. And do you, do you think what makes them think that it's more masculine then, do you know? Don't look at me, I don't oh. know. <laughs> so I don't like this. No, we don't like this idea that it's for men and it's for women. The car's yeah. got to be practical for what you use it for, regardless of what for you are. And if you're a man who takes the kids to school and a smaller car is easier to get around town, fine. Looks like there's more boot space. Is there, there is. Do you there want to have a quick look? Are you the kind of person that cares about that, or do you like it to look good? Is that what matters? <laughs> no? See big boots? Yep. No, I was, uh, was looking to see if it's got a height adjustable. Oh, it has. Why well, is that important for you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You see, yeah, it's, it's not slight, really it's a slight an issue for me. Yeah. It must be said. It's, very, it's a very modern colour. It's the yeah. colour of the season, you know. Is it? Oh, you'll be wearing right. it. Believe me. <laughs> you are. Look. I can't. <laughs> that's it. Well, definitely. I've had that about ten years. <laughs> <laughs> see, you're ahead of your time. There you go. That's where you'd be sat if you were if you were chauffeuring with this one. What do you think? Now this for me is uh, straight away without adjusting anything. This is quite a nice driving position. I don't know if the steering wheel is adjustable, but uh, driving position is great. But I can't see all the columns. I mean, if we'd locked it up like that, yeah, the way the steering wheel should be, I can see clearly now. What about headroom? Because very... you're quite tall, aren't you? You're not sure. Indeed, bloke, uh, right? that's one of my things with the car is headroom because uh, not so long ago we all used to have to wear hats and yeah. uh, in our job. 
but this, I mean, even not wearing a hat, this has got enough headroom for me. Well, you've got your hair sticking up there anyway. So yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, there's plenty of plenty of room in there for me. I mean, in this thing now, isn't it, that we should all really be driving smaller cars with smaller engines, really. They shouldn't sort of bracket it, should they, as a woman's car. You so know. what do you want from a car? I want, I want it to do a lot of miles. Cheap, yeah, <laughs> cheap. The petrol. Um, you don't want to look daft, do you? And do you think you're going to look daft in here? No, this? no, no, it's very nice. No, but as I say, say it's, it's, it's not, not dissimilar from every other smaller new, car, that's car that's being introduced. Do you want to have a quick look at the back end of this? Could you have a, <laughs> two seconds, <laughs> just honestly, because it's, it's quite it's distinctive. Quite it's, it's very different. It's not like, it, you see, look, it sticks yeah. out a bit there. Do you like? Do you like the Mini. Sporty. Looks yeah. quite sporty. Yeah, a lot better, definitely. Yeah. Yep, he's going to start it and drive off, isn't it? Nice, you, yeah, you've got the wrong idea. If you weren't here, I'd be away. <laughs> That's what you do with your retirement, is it? So we found out some of what the word on the street is about the design of the new Renault Clio. But to take the clothing analogy just a little further, we've come here to Nero's, a designer clothes shop, here in central Milton Keynes Shopping Centre. We're going to find out what an expert here thinks. When the clothes designing industry set out to design an item of clothing, it's got to fulfil a function, it's got a purpose, it has to do something, and it has to do that in a way that appeals to people's taste. So let's find out what a real expert in what people buy in terms of clothes fashion thinks about car fashion. I think it's quite a nice, small, nicely shaped car. It's more, I would say, more for a young person, or just like a, someone who's, you know, it reminds me of a loafer. <laughs> I was going to ask you what item of clothing it was. Why a loafer? Be honest. They've got tassels on the front, haven't they? Not a tassel, but just nice, slick, nice, plain front. Uh, what have you got on there? I've got a pair of loafers on. It's got a loafer on. Yeah. It's like this. Be like a loafer. Like there. Like that. Why? I don't know. I see it's just a pair like um, nice and slick and smooth and just sits nicely. I like the way it just sits on the road. When you're selling clothes to people, obviously, mm -hmm. do, do people really have their own idea about their own style or do we just follow fashion? Because that, that does bleed through into the motor industry as well, doesn't it? It's it all does, to do with the image does. and fashion. That's right, exactly. Um, yeah, I suppose so, it does, because the type of person I see who'd be driving this car would be either young or a married couple or something quite similar. Um, and they come in, they like, go in they, and they want to look the business. The car's looking the business, so they want to look the business. Well, look, we're pretty conservative in this country, aren't mm -hmm. we? In the UK, we're not renowned for being flamboyant and, and right. prepared to way, have a go and look good. Do you, do you really find that we actually make that much of an effort or we're just we do, shabby we do, creatures no, no, like no, no, me? We do, we do. Because I'm serving pe all kinds of people and even from like a builder to a executive, he wants to look good, go out, look good. He's got an image to uphold, he's upholding, he's going to He's going to push that boat out a little bit extra. So, we've spoken to some of the people who matter when a new car comes onto the market. Some of the people who might be buying a car like the new Clear. The people in Milton Keynes to find out their impressions of the design, the style and the look of the car. There is another group of people who are very important in this equation, of course. And they're the people who are going to sell them. So we're going to move from Milton Keynes, which still isn't the style capital of Europe, and move over to Dunstable which isn't either. But there is a Renault dealer there, and we're going to talk to him and find out what he thinks of the car. He's been selling Renault for years, so of course he's been selling the previous version of the Clio. So it's going to be very interesting to find out what he thinks of the new one, because we mustn't forget, you and I might buy a car, and it's a big decision. We might be buying something like this, nine and a half, ten thousand pounds, it's an awful lot of money. But for this guy that we're going to talk to, who's selling them, obviously he makes his living. So for him it's crucial. How good is the car, how a customer's going to receive it. But this is a chance while we're on the way, of course, to have a quick spin behind the wheel, to get an idea of what the car's about when you're actually driving it. And I must say that right from the start, it does feel like a much more solid proposition. Renault have said that they've uh, built an entirely new car here from the wheels up. We're not talking about a bit of a facelift and a new set of light lenses front and back. We're talking about a totally new car, and it does feel it. It feels very solid on the road. Renault built the last clear as the small car with large car refinement. And I suppose it was for the first time you could get electric windows and air conditioning and the like on a small car. Well, I think they've taken it a step further with this, the nuclear, because as a driving experience, it really does feel pretty substantial. And a quick word too about safety. I know we've said that when you're buying a small car, yeah, the way it looks is important. None of us wants to drive around looking at Wally, but neither do we want to be injured if something goes horribly wrong. I don't want to get myself injured if I'm taking my friends in the back or family. Safety is increasingly important and manufacturers will agree that 
Increasingly, they'll sell cars on the basis of safety features. Well, we've got a passenger airbag and a driver airbag in here. The RT 1.4 version. So this is Dunstable. This is Renault. We'll pull up and have a chat to the dealer, see what he thinks. It's actually quite odd to see the old Clio alongside the new. And it must be said, if you thought this was a bit close, just before we go in, look at this. If things do go a bit wrong for you in the supermarket crush, plastic, very clever. Let's see what the dealer thinks. I think the car is still very, very fresh, but still retains some of the impact of the previous Clio, i.e. when you look at it, it's instantly recognisable from the front as a Clio, even though it's changed. And I don't think it will have the adverse effect of some of the new models being brought out in the last few years by some manufacturers where you have a like it or loathe it situation. When we first saw the car in the press, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed, like some pictures don't show it up to its best. But when we went out to Paris to see the car in the flesh, it was a revelation. And the last time I can remember being that excited was, if I can mention it, when Nissan launched the new Micra. I don't think the character has changed. I think it does look more masculine from the front. As I said it still looks Clio-esque, uh, which is uh, French for looking like a Clio. It certainly feels as a bigger car does. It feels solid, it's more spacious. Build quality is certainly there. The old test of the clunk of the doors, that's always a good start. All the instrumentation, everything that we touch and feel inside, feels solid, no flimsiness anywhere. And when you actually look down, from the dealer point of view, then the shut lines, the actual body lines of the car, they all look to be of top quality. So, the new Clio from Renault, a car that's matured and grown, just like Nicole from the adverts, of course. I wonder what did happen to her? Still, I suppose she needs to earn the money to pay for her Renault Clio somehow, but who'd ever have thought it? Here, in Dunstable. Anyway, oh, Nicole, I asked for mayonnaise with this. After the break, we meet one of the Renault Clio test team and also the chief designer of the project on Carfile. What could be better? The glorious south of France on a beautiful spring day. The sun is shining, the sky is blue. And we're here in search of Nicole and Papa. Well, particularly Nicole from those dreadfully contrived TV commercials that are filmed around this area that have helped make the Renault Clio one of Europe's best sellers since its launch in 1981. Over four million Clios have been sold across Europe. And now it's time for an all new Clio. The Clio 2 from Renault. Now, when manufacturers decide that they want to change a car, they have a couple of options. Firstly, they go for a radical, completely different look, as Ford have done with the Escort's replacement, the Focus. Or they keep the name, they restyle, they improve features, as, say, Mazda have done with their new MX-5. Now, however, perhaps the designers at Renault have hit the middle ground with the new Clio. The name stays, obviously. It has a familiar look, yet it is all new. Now, if you've ever driven a Clio before, you'll already know how good it is. So the designers and engineers at Renault have had to work very hard to make the new Clio even better. And they succeeded with a whole new platform, a new body and a new suspension. I really do like the shape of the new Clio. It's very chic, it's very French, it's very Renault, and I love the new rear. It has a huge rakish window, gorgeous styling, and big rear lights for increased safety. And the boot's not bad either for a car of this size. On three-door models, the front doors are big, which makes getting in and out of the back, even for a six-footer like me, reasonably comfortable, and quite roomy back there as well. Up front, it's an all-new fascia. Everything is easy and to hand, and a useful display play in the centre here on some models. So most importantly, what's the Clio actually like to drive on the open road? Well, not too bad. This is the 1.6 RXE I'm driving at the moment. 90 brake horsepower from that engine. Quite nippy, quite sprightly, although it does sound a bit harsh when you rev it hard. Handling is OK. There's a bit too much body roll, though, for my liking. Doesn't match up with the new Astra and the way that that handles. And the steering could do with being a little lighter, particularly at low speeds. Since, in other respects, the first-generation Clio was already positioned high in its segment, we created three essential positioning factors for the new Clio. We decided it must be better in terms of safety and reliability. 
better in terms of comfort and handling, and better in terms of actual specification, especially when it came to active and passive safety. Safety, as it should be, is high on the Clio's agenda. It's got twin airbags, certainly on some models, there are new pyrotechnic seatbelt pretensioners and new safety type head restraints. The body is stiffer, and Renault say they've raised the stakes for small car safety by matching it to their largest vehicles. Now with any car, there are usually always some dislikes and niggles that you come across, and rather worryingly, I've come across quite a lot in the short space of time that I've had this Clio. The accelerator pedal is a bit sticky. The clutch has a very short travel, and you can even get your foot stuck down there. I haven't got big feet at all. Also, it's got air conditioning in this RXE, and to be honest, it's nothing short of useless. On a fairly warm day like today, 60 odd degrees, it just isn't blowing enough cool air into the cabin. And finally, the hazard warning button, hidden down here, almost under underneath the handbrake as if it had been forgotten and somebody said, my goodness, we forgot to put that button on, let's put it down there out of the way. You'll find a Clio to suit your taste with three engines available, a 1.2 litre 60 brake horsepower, a 75 brake horsepower 1.4 litre and the 1.6 litre which kicks out 90 brake horsepower. There'll be a diesel later this year and a 1.6 16 valve if you like your Renault spicy. The Clio is available in four trim levels from entry through RN, RT and Luxury RXE with a price range of £8,370 to £11,700 on the road and ABS is now standard on 50% of the range. Now there's no doubt that the Clio is in a very competitive market sector and the competition doesn't come much tougher than the Polo, the Fiesta, the Corsa and the Micra to name just a few. Renault predicts sales in 1999 of 60,000 for the Clio. Whether the UK will take it to heart quite as much as the outgoing model though remains to be seen. The 1.2 will certainly be the most popular version. And the Clio does have some niggly little items, but it should continue to be what Renault claim it is, a small car with big car refinement. The success of any car depends on the design team, who have not just to be artistic and creative, but highly practical, producing a car that appeals to the maximum amount of people while keeping within strict budgets. Ginny Buckley met up with Renault's design chief at the Geneva International Motor Show. Patrick, you've um, just overseen the redesign of yep. Clio, and it sold I think, something like 3.8 million Clios have That's been made. Right. That's an enormous number, yes. and it's obviously very successful. So why change it? Well, because, you know, in fact, uh, after so many years, seven years, uh, a lot of things have happened on the, in the field of, uh, of safety. And today, I think that it's almost impossible to carry over platforms in, in, uh, on, on a second generation. Likewise, it is impossible to maintain a car for, let's say, 15 years, as might have been the case a few years ago. Just the, the, the uh, changes that have taken place in our knowledge on safety, we just cannot afford not to bring it out uh, into a new generation of cars. So that's the reason why we changed. It says a lot for the original Clio that it, I can't believe it's seven years. It still, was still looking very yeah. fresh. It's always been billed as the small car with big car refinement. Is Clio 2 the same? Oh, it's very much, very much uh, in, in the tradition, I would say. Uh, uh, what, we, what I can say about the Clio 2 is that uh, uh, contrary to, let's say, a car which is not marketed in England, the, the Twingo, where we had a, a, a blank sheet of paper, there with the Clio, Clio 2, or the, the current uh, new Clio, uh, we had such a, a success with the first one that we were clearly very influenced on what to do for the new one. And um, that's one of the things that we've, we've maintained on the Clio 2. And in fact, what we've done is offer a little more of everything. So it's uh, even more than before. I think um, when new car, when small cars are yeah. redeveloped, they always seem to be, become bigger <laughs> somehow. There's always more room, and I, I believe Clio yeah. 2 is bigger, isn't it, yeah. than its predecessor? Fact, that's 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 true. It is uh, slightly bigger, uh, namely uh, it has a little more headroom at the front and also at the rear. It is a, a couple of centimeters longer in overall length. And that has been only due to um, safety, namely the crash zone has been slightly increased in order to, for it to become as performing as, as, as it is. 
What engines are in the range? Are there new engines as well? Well, I'm not a great expert on, uh, on engines, but what I can tell you is I went out uh, to try uh, the car in the Caribbean this weekend. So oh. I can... <laughs> and the one that I particularly like is the, is the new engine, the new 16-valve uh, engine, which is, uh, has a tremendous elasticity in the, in the bottom end. Uh, and it's the sort of car that you can drive and basically, whereas on another you might have to change gear there, you can, you can accelerate uh, in, uh, in, in fifth gear. Uh, at a very low speed and that's something which I really appreciate with modern modern engines and the, and that's the I think the best engine that we've done for so many years it's the K4 4M that's right before any car is brought to market there are tests and more tests those intended to prove reliability safety durability and performance everything is analyzed to the last detail mostly using computers and robots but at the end of the day, it's a human that will drive the car. This is where Patrick Molos's team come in. They test cars in all conditions and all situations, reporting back to the design team so that there should be minimal problems on the cars that get delivered to customers. Well, we've built on the experience that we've managed to gain in seven years with the old Clio, which was a reference model in its class and remains so today. And we've also tried to move on because we want to keep this leading position for the start of the 21st century. We've tried to improve comfort by better isolating the occupants from the road. To do this, we've increased the volume of rubber in the front suspension and developed a new rear suspension, which allows passengers to be even better protected from road noise. With the new Clio, Renault has achieved its ambitions across the entire range. Where suspension is concerned, two anti-roll bars provide excellent grip. The new rear suspension with a flexible cross beam and elastic mountings provides excellent road holding, plus a high level of comfort. Finally, its braking system has been completely redesigned, notably to include an ABS with EBV electronic rear braking compensator operational in all conditions. In short, a nuclear which offers even safer and more efficient road behaviour.